It won bike of the year and now it's back. The Norco Optic is fully refreshed for 2024 and has a whole host of new features. It's still short travel with 125 mil of rear wheel and a 140 fork, but it is now a high pivot and can be run in either mixed wheel or full 29. And there are both carbon and aluminum frame options. We'll talk a bit about geometry before getting into that new high pivot layout. And geo-wise, it's squarely a trail bike. Um, there's nothing too far outlying here. It's got a 65 degree head angle, a low bottom bracket with about 32 mil of drop. Um, the reach numbers are, I would say, like perfectly in line with general sizing. They range from 422 up to 522 mil. There's five sizes, which makes a perfect 20 mil split between. I like that incremental scaling that Norco does well. Um, their ride align system means that as the reach changes, so does the rear center and so does the seat tube angle. So rear centers don't grow nearly as much as the reach, obviously. They're about six millimeters per size. And for me, on a size four of five, I'm riding a 497.5 mil reach. I have a 77.25 degree seat tube angle and a 433 millimeter chainstay. Um, the stack numbers on these bikes are fairly high for what they are, uh, 435 mil on the bike that I'm riding. And overall, that just gives like a nice upright feel to it. Um, the pedaling position is really comfortable. I think Norco has really nailed that uh, balanced geometry as well. It, it may seem like the chainstays are short, especially on paper, but it's important to remember that because of the high pivot layout, the rear center does grow quite a bit through travel. If you're swapping between the full 29 setup and the mixed wheel setup, all of the geometry stays exactly the same except for one point, and that is the chainstay length. Um, it's six mil longer in the 29er setting. The kinematics of the optic are familiar in some ways and completely new in others. Um, it's using the VPS HP suspension acronym that Norco has used on other bikes like the Shore. It may seem similar to the long travel range, but generally the layout is quite novel uh, within their lineup. You'll notice a little sticker on the frame that says eye track and that's because this specific suspension layout falls under a pre-existing patent by the same name. That patent specifies where the pulley location is relative to the main pivot of the bike. The location of that idler pulley is specifically important to anti squat and that was a detail that the team at Norco was really um, intent about getting right on these bikes. So they built a mule that allowed them to place it in different locations and test different anti-squat numbers. And I think they landed at a really good center line. The shock stroke is slightly longer than the prior optic. And that's just to make sure that you get that sticker advertised 125 millimeters of rear wheel travel, you know, big star shaped on the box. Though Norco has specced air shocks on the entire lineup, including the frame only options, they did extensive testing in the early phases of the project with coil shocks and are confident that coils will work well with the bike. So for those of you who want to play with that aftermarket, it's totally an option. Anti-Rise is slightly higher than the outgoing optic, which just means that under braking, the bike will squat a little bit more into travel, but not so much that it's gonna be packing in. Finally, there is the element of the rear axle path. Because this is a high pivot bike, that rear axle is moving a bit further forward than a standard layout. As I mentioned previously at SAG, it's about six to seven millimeters longer rear center and at max extension, which occurs around two thirds of the way through travel, it's a full 10 millimeters longer rear center before it starts hooking forwards again. There are six build kits available for the Optic with a range of prices between $0 and $10,000. We don't have firm pricing yet, but you'll see it here in the magic box somewhere. Four of those builds are based around carbon frames, two around aluminum frames, and then they have frame only options for both carbon and aluminum as well. I have been riding the C1 build, which features Fox factory suspension, a SRAM XO transmission drivetrain, a one up 210 mil dropper post and SRAM level silver brakes. As it comes, my bike weighs around 33 pounds or 15 kilos which is on the heavier side for a 125 mil trail bike, but I would say this is a more capable and unusual trail bike than your average. So perhaps that weight is warranted. Things on my bike didn't stay totally stock for long. I've been playing with the build of the optic for a few months and have 
changed a few components to suit myself. Right off the bat, I changed the brakes out. I found the levels didn't really match the character of the bike as well as something like codes. So I swapped codes on. Uh, I've been playing with tires as the seasons have changed. And finally, I added just a, a higher rise bar just for personal preference. Overall, uh, I think the build kit that I've got is well sorted. The suspension is excellent. And I think the, uh, the general package suits the nature of the bike well. It's, you know, it's a confident trail bike and like most of the components, save for those brakes, are confident trail components. This is an unusual little bike right off the bat. The geometry may seem fairly typical, but the kinematics and high pivot layout mean it is going to stand out quite a bit from the typical 120 mil to 130 mil crowd. This may be an aggressive, punky little trail bike, but it's still meant to climb very well. And I think that Norco achieved a really nice pedaling characteristic with this bike. It airs on the side of grippy, the rear wheel moving out of the way over bumpier climbs, but still has enough anti-squat to keep you, you know, at a consistent level in travel. You're not bobbing very much, even on like out of the saddle efforts. Um, I really enjoyed like punching up technical climbs with this bike and found that it handled that really well, even with the smaller rear wheel. It's just easy going through most of that. It's not the, the snappiest pedaler, I think partially because it has the high pivot and there's some psychological aspect to that, but overall it holds its own. Like I'm happy to pedal it all day. I'd say on more consistent grades, when you're just humming up a fire road, you do notice the sound of the idler quite a bit. Um, I kind of expected it to break in a little bit with time, but at no point has the sound diminished. I've gotten used to it and I did pretty quickly, but if you're sensitive to such things, I'd say like bringing a little bottle of chain lube with you might be useful because over the course of a longer ride, you do start to notice that hum and it kind of reverberates through the frame and gets this like going. And I think that might bother some people. The shock is happy to get into travel, both over bumps and when you're pumping the bike for grip. I found the support to be quite predictable and consistent and the bottom out of this bike is quite excellent. I actually never found like a harsh bottom, even when I horribly cased a huge step down, just kind of rolled right through it and the bike kept humming along. I'd say moments like that are what set the optic apart from the rest of the short travel cohort. It's hard to say if the bike totally warrants the high pivot layout and the extra complications that come with it, but it does feel like it has an extra little card to pull when you pull for something weird on trail or like get a little bit offline. It is a confident little bike that rides beyond its travel numbers. I'd say there are two areas where it really shines, especially relative to other 120, 130 mil bikes that I'm riding right now. And those are in rough chattery terrain and in the right corner. Um, over rough terrain, the rearward axle path and just the general kinematic of the bike work really well. And you don't get as much feedback through the pedals that you would on some other bikes. And then I've noticed as well that the cornering characteristic really rewards like a heavy ride for lack of a better term. I think if you're really pushing into the bike, you kind of open up the wheelbase a bit and you can carve corners really nicely. I found that with the full 29 setup, it holds flatter corners really nicely and can carry speed through corners really well. And then with the mixed wheel setup, I think because the rear end's a bit shorter and because of just the nature of the smaller wheel, like you're encouraged to kind of slap into things more and like maybe ride if not faster, more aggressively. And I haven't totally decided which I prefer, but I've been riding both an equal amount and currently I'm airing a bit towards the 27.5 rear wheel. That's the broad overview of the bike, a little bit of ride impression. There'll be more written in the full review write-up, but for now, let's get to a couple pro cons. Uh, my first pro is just the suspension performance of this bike. It's a really confident, 120, 130 mil bike and outperforms a lot of other bikes in that travel category. Second, I find the cornering characteristics, mostly due to the, to the geometry, to just be excellent. It, it has a nice balance between the wheels. Uh, I think the like more upright fit is really nicely suited to me and it just feels uh, natural in the right terrain. My third pro is that this bike isn't going to appeal to everybody. Um, that may seem like an odd concept, but I think it's cool that Norco came out with an idiosyncratic bike that certain people are going to love and not everyone is going to get. We're not without our flaws, nor is the Norco Optic. Um, the first 
con that comes to mind is the noise of the frame and the drivetrain. Uh, I found that when you're pedaling, even like a medium length ride, the idler does start to make quite a bit of noise, even if you've lubed it right before the ride. And the carbon frame kind of has a noisy reverberation to it. I've noticed the cables in the tube, in tube housing can kind of rattle a little bit. I've started using some mastic tape to try to quiet that, but haven't totally achieved it yet. Um, second con, I think the rear end length could be a little bit longer on these bikes. It feels fun and poppy in the right terrain, but um, you can get a little bit back seat relative to how long the reach is. And I think unless you're really pushing into the suspension to make sure that rear end is growing, you can kind of uh, get over the rear axle too much. Third con is just a, a spec choice for this. I think it's a really confident bike, but it's odd to me that the highest tier build comes with levels. Um, luckily, most of the brakes on all the other builds are stronger. You get codes on a lot of the cheaper builds, which is a kind, kind of confusing option, but uh, I would just like to see a consistently stronger brake kit across the, all of the, the build options. Conclusion, wrapping it up. Who's the optic for? I, I don't know. I think it's, it's, if you think it's for you, then it's for you. This is a funky little bike. I think it's gonna appeal to a certain crowd. Mike and I have been talking about it as like the, the shop kid bike. It's like, you want something that's cool and kind of unique, but maybe not the perfect tool for every job. I think it's a little bike that can be ridden in pretty gnarly terrain. And if that's something that's appealing to you and you kind of like the like underbiked, undergunned, but still confident feel, then the optic might be on your short list. If you think you're one of those idiosyncratic people who the optic is really for, uh, let us know in the comments. I'd be curious to see who's buying these bikes and like how the builds end up turning out. It's a cool little bike and I think it's gonna appeal to a lot of interesting people.